Our education will be led by Mr. Relian Soriente, President of the Economics Organization of De La Salle University. Let us all stand. Um, let us put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear God, we offer everything to you during this symposium where we ask for your blessing and divine providence that the activities set for this undertaking be successful and effective. May we also reta uh, retain the invaluable knowledge and learning experiences that we derive from this activity for actual application when we leave this venue. We pray that you bless all the committees in charge that they fulfill their task responsibly that the objectives that they have set may all be achieved. Your generous blessing would mean the success of this symposium. We know that without it, we can do nothing. May we be living witnesses of your genuine love through the implementation of the knowledge acquired through this activity. Grant us your divine wisdom as we go about our daily task after this symposium. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please remain standing for the Philippine National Anthem. Again, the welcome to uh, the uh, Annual General Assembly and Symposium of Bian ASEAN at 50, Opportunities and Challenges for Regional Integration. This is sponsored by the De La Salle University anti Looking Institute, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, the Philippine Apex Study Center Network, and the Economics Organization. To uh, welcome us is the Vice Chancellor for Research and Innovation at Bella Salle University, Dr. Academician Raymond Gerald Marta. President of the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, Executive Director Zaldi Patron of the Office of ASEAN Affairs of the Department of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Elinda Medallia, Project Director of the Philippine APEX Study Center Network, uh, Dr. Teresa Tuliao, Director of the Angelo King Institute, colleagues from academia, and last but not least, the young economists in training at this event. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this uh, annual General Assembly and Symposium, which tackles the, the transition that we're in the midst of. ASEAN integration is underway and uh, behooves us as an educational institution to think of the implications that this will hold in terms of the economic environment that the country faces within this region in the coming decades. Uh, ASEAN is set to establish itself 
as a major economic block in the world, uh, with 600 million population, a dynamic, uh, highly trained population of, with cultural diversity and uh, a lot of common regional interests. And I think it is essential that academics and, uh, in the case of this event, uh, economics specialists uh, should discuss what the future holds in store for Filipinos. Because what we see in the coming years is a transition in terms of identity from us being just Filipinos, so to speak. Uh, but in the future, we will see ourselves as Filipinos and ASEAN citizens, uh, perhaps in the same way that the European Union has become, in effect, a very large uh, super country. Maybe ASEAN will be like this one generation from today. What we need to do is see the future and use our expertise to predict what will happen and make the adjustments and uh, develop policies that will respond to these challenges. And it always begins with events where academics and experts and representatives from government sit down and discuss the issues and apply their minds to this challenge. So with that, I would I would like to say welcome to De La Salle University, but in fact, it's welcome to De La Salle College of St. Cadillum. Uh, but this event has been organized uh, primarily by the Anglo King Institute under Dr. Tuliao's team. And I welcome you to this event. I hope you find the exchange of ideas stimulating. I hope that there are ideas that should develop for the future of our country and our region. Thank you very much. Before I call the next uh, speaker, I would like to explain why this event is being done at the College of St. Denis, although it's still affiliated with the La Salle. As you know, this event was prepared months ago, okay? We have to have common dates for our speakers. And since this is almost August, and I know there will be floods and rains coming, I said, we cannot hold it at De La Salle University. Although we want to show you the campus at De La Salle University, okay? The point is, good thing we decided to be to hold it here. Yesterday, De La Salle, you know, declared a holiday. And if we had an event at De La Salle, my God, I don't know where we're going to hold this event. So the safest way is to hold it in a hotel, okay? Still <laughs> affiliated with Dela Uh With that, uh, may I call on Dr. Gilberto M. Liando, President of the Philippine Institute for Development Studies and Lead Convener of the Philippine APEC Study Center Network to give the opening remarks. Gilberto. Thank you, Jen. I asked Jen a while ago how I will uh, address the dignitaries here. The protocol. Is it by age, or by duty, or by experience, or by uh, profession? I would choose to do it first by uh, saying good morning to Linda. <laughs> so that's beauty, okay? So. The beauty is, you know, Jones here, beauty. She has talent. She's a senior fellow in the mm -hmm. and she, she taught here uh, years ago, right, at De La Salle? Yes. And she has, uh, I don't know, a very good reputation in the profession. So I think I make a mistake when I decided to meet her first in the morning. Of course, uh, good morning to Ms. Ron by age, Jules. <laughs> We are of the same age, we are both 66 years old. <laughs> we should not deny it. Okay. And uh, of course, Director Patron, uh, because he's a minister from the Department of Foreign Affairs, and forgive me, Gerard, uh, Mr. Freeman. Of course, more famous because uh, I heard you are a nephew. You want to object to my mentioning that you're the nephew of my teacher, mentor, Lady Satan. And to all the members of the PACN, of course, we have also the Dr. here. Now, how do we say this? Well, in the recent decades, as we know, we've been, we've been uh, uh, 
reading history and we are witness to history and we are part of it, we have seen how globalization and uh, integration have uh, borne great fruits for countries and peoples who have chosen to, to embrace openness and uh, globalization. And we have seen the benefits of this in terms of the course our neighboring country, China. We've seen how globalization, free trade, openness, regulatory reforms have borne the fruits. The poverty divide has been somehow surmounted by China simply because uh, <coughs> China embraced the market. There's no fear of what the markets will do. And the openness and uh, this thinking that we have to, they, they have to really uh, compete out there in the global markets <coughs> have yielded a lot of benefits. So poverty has been, uh, I think, significantly addressed, poverty reduction. But then, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, after that, uh, there was this thing that. Uh, globalization, free trade, openness, has become the orthodoxy. So you would not hear one country objecting to greater openness, to regional integration. In fact, uh, in this part of the world, we have the ASEAN, and we have also uh, looked at this as a way to integration, the openness markets, as a way to address our growth and poverty. But then, as you all know, and you all know, uh, came this rising tide of populism, right? protectionism, and exemplified by uh, the Brexit, the verdict, and also in the other part of the globe, 10,000 miles away or more, the rising tide of Trump, the America first. So, what is this? We've seen that countries which have embraced globalization, promoted it, promoted the Washington Consensus, promoted opening of markets, are themselves now saying, in a way, that politically it doesn't work, it may not work. And that's because a lot of people have been left behind, even in countries like the US and parts of Europe. So in The Guardian today, I, I read, and I'm borrowing <coughs> this idea from the Guardian magazine, saying that even the foremost proponents of globalization and free trade may have been having some second thought about uh, thoughts about the efficacy of globalization, free markets, openness, simply because the the fact that poverty and inequality have been the scourge of modern nations. So the rising tide of populism and uh, protectionism. We see this in the horizon. And we ask ourselves, should we continue with this ASEAN, digital integration, open markets, and globalization at that? So there's this tension between you know, the orthodoxy, which is globalization and free trade, and the reality that uh, may have not served the purpose of a large number of people especially the unskilled and the poor. Now, I'm not here to provide the answers. I'm just here to prick your curiosity that even as we today would, would talk about regional integration and globalization, you have to bear in mind that uh, it has to be something that should work for the people, should work for especially those who are left, so-called left behind. So, I would now uh, say that Linda, thank you for this. Linda prepared this. But I, I didn't use the first part. <laughs> I will use the second part. <laughs> the ASEAN way of consensus and non-intervention for all its limitations has surely but slowly but surely brought together our communities, diverse members of the ASEAN, under a goal of shared prosperity. Even as we say that uh, you know this poverty and equality, rising tide and protectionism, the retreat, and God forbid, to authority, even as we see this, 
we say that we are hopeful that the experiment, well, it's still an experiment, it's not yet born full fruits. It just established legally the ASEAN Economic Community, I think last year, was it, or was it 2015? No. So 2015, legally, we have the ASEAN Economic Community, but it's a work in progress. But we say that we remain hopeful that this experiment, this new structure in the region, would really address not only growth issues, but also poverty issues, high income inequality. And it seems to be that the, if you look at the evidence, in theory, it's, we still say they would, one would still go for the orthodoxy. That, uh, and, and uh, as, as, as Vice Chancellor Raymond Plant said a while ago, you're looking at 600 million um, consumers, producers, population. You're looking at all this, this vast uh, range of skills. The Asian are very skilled people. You're looking at uh, the demographics, which tend to favor this side of the globe. So rather than say that uh, we have to retreat from openness and integration of markets, I would dare say that today, this morning, on the part of this morning, we'll devote to presenting research that would, I think, shore up the confidence we have in the efficacy of markets. And this is what we want to tell our policymakers, especially in the eve of the SONA. And I will not comment on how I reacted to the SONA. I will. <laughs> <laughs> we have our own respective reactions. I would just say that, well, uh, what has been laid before us yesterday was the challenge, the opportunities and challenges for the Philippines. What we have to do in order to be a strong nation, in order to really be a, a significant participant in this grand experiment called the Asian Economic Community. So I would like to thank the researchers, those who will be presenting papers today, for really putting their minds, collective minds, into to bear on issues that really impact on how this country will go in the future. And finally, let me thank uh, the College of St. Cecil. Of course, <laughs> I have to make this distinction between the university, the National University out there in Taft and the College of St. Denil, of course, Angelo King Institute, and of course, the Vice Chancellor for hosting this uh, General Assembly of the Philippine Apex Study Center Network, which we are hosting. Thank you, yes. Thank you very much, and let's have a good workshop today. Thank you, Gilbert. Uh, I think ad living is now the uh, no, no, uh, the norm. Okay, um, following the State of the Nation address last night. Okay, or I hope the keynote address will also uh, follow that trend. Okay, uh, deliver that is um, Executive Director Saudi Patron of the Office of ASEAN Affairs of the Department of Foreign Affairs. Let me give a short introduction of. Uh, uh, Minister or uh, Executive Director Patron. He joined the Department of Foreign Affairs in 1996 as a career diplomat and holds the rank of career minister. He is Executive Director of the DFA Office of the ASEAN Affairs, a position he assumed since February 2016. As Executive Director, he is assisting the Assistant Secretary in promoting and managing the Philippines' interests and advocacies in ASEAN. He's also coordinating with the ASEAN National Organizing Council on the substantive agenda and other activities related to the Philippines' chairmanship of the ASEAN in 2017. He was the DFA ASEAN Director for the Summit Trees Division from June 2015 to June 2016. He graduated from the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, with a degree in Bachelor of Science in Economics, and earned his Master's in Business Administration degree from the Ateneo de Manila University Graduate School of Business. To give us a broad perspective of the ASEAN, that ASEAN is not just an economic integration, but it's also a political and a cultural and social community. Let's all welcome Career Minister Saldi Patron.
Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Teresa Pilao, for that very uh, kind uh, introduction. Uh, I will not uh, go ad lib. I have a uh, prepared uh, speech. So uh, let me just uh, uh, also recognize Dr. Uh, Raymond Tan, uh, Vice Chancellor of the LSU, Dr. Gilbert Yanto, whom uh, of uh, PEDS, President of PEDS, whom we have been uh, working with uh, in uh, uh, other activities uh, in the DFA. Members of the Philippine uh, APEC uh, Study Center Network um, and uh, economists from uh, DLSU, uh, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to commend the, the Philippine APEC Study Center Network and uh, the Amalo uh, King Institute and the rest of the organizers for hosting today's uh, symposium and general assembly. Today's theme, Beyond uh, ASEAN at 50, Opportunities and Challenges for Regional Integration, brings to light the essence of our ASEAN chairmanship and our continuous efforts for community building and regional integration. Since its founding on 8 August 1967, Southeast Asia has steadily become a region of peace, stability, and prosperity. From a loose grouping of non-aligned states, ASEAN collectively has become central to the regional security architecture and global economy. The aims and purposes of ASEAN were all about cooperation in the economic, social, cultural, technical, educational, and other fields, and in the promotion of regional peace and stability by cultivating respect for justice, the rule of law, and adherence to the principles of the United Nations Charter. Now that ASEAN has reached its golden year, one must wonder how it managed to become one of the most successful regional organizations in the world today. From the beginning, the five founding fathers simply envisioned a peaceful, secure, stable, progressive, culturally intact, and educated region. But now, ASEAN has surpassed that and already has a new vision, a master plan for ASEAN by 2025. The reason for this development is because of the member states' unwavering commitment towards regional integration, so much so that they themselves fully know that by working together, they have a much better chance of improving the welfare of their respective peoples. Indeed, it was an advantage because ASEAN continues to stand firm amidst the ever-challenging global environment. This resulted into a tightly knit 10 member states dedicated more than ever to attain a community that is politically cohesive economically integrated, and socially responsible. The ASEAN community is comprised of three pillars, namely the ASEAN political security community, ASEAN economic community, and ASEAN sociocultural community. A starting point to discuss the future of ASEAN is the ASEAN Vision 2025. Although 2025 is less than a decade away, the principles expressed in ASEAN Vision 2025 forging ahead together will still remain relevant throughout the next half century and beyond as a guide for crafting a shared future for Southeast Asia. The ASEAN political security community aims to build a community through enhanced regional cooperation and integration, envisions a rules-based ASEAN community of shared values that promotes and protects human rights, upholds democracy, and develops programs in post-conflict areas. Peace, security, and stability are being enjoyed in the region, largely due to ASEAN's key role as a platform for constructive dialogue, consultation, and confidence building through consensus. Frameworks and mechanisms that make this happen include the Treaty of Amity and Cooperation in Southeast Asia and the Southeast Asian Nuclear Weapons Free Zone and mechanisms such as the ASEAN Regional Forum, the ASEAN Post-Ministerial Conferences, and the East Asia Summit. The ASEAN Economic Community was established to deepen economic integration initiatives to usher in overall economic growth as well as on the structural transformation across ASEAN economies. The AAC Blueprint 2025 aims to have an ASEAN community that is highly integrated and cohesive, competitive, innovative and dynamic, with enhanced connectivity and sectoral cooperation, and a more resilient, inclusive, and people-oriented, people-centered community 
and is integrated with the global economy. The Philippines, as chair of ASEAN this year, will continue to promote inclusive innovation-led growth in ASEAN through promotion of women and youth entrepreneurship, digital innovation, connectivity and sub-regional cooperation, and micro, small, and medium enterprises development in individual economies and in, the, and in the region as a whole. Through these various initiatives, ASEAN can truly work for the wider benefit of Filipinos and of the peoples of the entire Southeast Asia. The ASEAN social cultural community seeks to build a committed, participative, and socially responsible community, an inclusive community that promotes high quality of life, equitable access to opportunities for all, and promotes and protects human rights, a sustainable community that promotes social development and environmental protection through effective mechanisms, a resilient community with enhanced capacity and capability to adapt and respond to social and economic vulnerabilities, disasters, climate change, as well as emerging threats and challenges, and a dynamic and harmonious community aware and proud of its identity, culture, and heritage. To achieve ASCC's vision, ASEAN continues to participate in and conduct activities on human resources development, disaster management and climate change, education, and culture. ASEAN also engages with a broad range of stakeholders in the government, civil society organizations, multilateral organizations, the private sector, the academe, and ASEAN dialogue partners. ASEAN, despite its progress in the past five decades, continues to face challenges. Hence, it is important to establish the necessary capabilities and pursue sound and consistent macroeconomic policies in order for ASEAN member states to fully maximize the benefits and outweigh the risks of regional integration. As chair of ASEAN in its 50th anniversary and guided by the team Partnering for Change, Engaging the World, we aim to pursue our thematic priorities, which are first, a people-oriented and people-centered ASEAN, second, peace and stability in the region, third, maritime security and cooperation, fourth, inclusive innovation-led growth, fifth, ASEAN resiliency, and sixth, ASEAN as a model of regionalism and a global player. All of these will serve as the Philippines' advocacy as we eagerly work with the rest of the region to come closer to a fully integrated ASEAN community. As we begin our journey for the next half century, ASEAN centrality in the Asian regional security architecture will continue to be cemented. The presence of a strong ASEAN will become increasingly essential in order to ensure a peaceful and cooperative relations among the major powers in Asia. As a fulcrum for Asian geopolitics, ASEAN creates an atmosphere conducive to constructive engagement and plays a leadership role in shaping a regional order based on shared values and common strategic interests. The next 50 years will also highlight ASEAN's effectiveness as a model of regional integration. There is general agreement that ASEAN is one of the most economically dynamic regions in the world and is forecast to become the fourth largest economy by 2050. The Asia Foundation also emphasizes that the diversity among ASEAN member states forms part of the great strength of Asia's, uh, ASEAN's economy since diversity unlocks and empowers innovation, which in turn drives market growth and increases productivity. ASEAN is now embarking on the next phase of its own regional integration project. The seamless physical, digital, regulatory, and people-to-people -people connectivity. Integration for ASEAN involves both strengthening of our regional community while at the same time enhancing our partnership with the community of nations. I call on our colleagues in the universities and research institutions who are here now and also in other parts of the country to continue working with us in the government with your remarkable dedication to improve people's lives in different areas, such as education and economy. Your active participation in the ASEAN community makes you part of the solution to our country's 
and the region's problems. And you are agents of positive change in the societies we live in. Thank you. Mabuhay ang magandang umaga sa inyo. Maraming maraming salamat. Thank you very much, uh, Executive Director Sal Di Patron, for giving us the three pillars of, uh, ASEAN, uh, of the ASEAN community. Um, to introduce, uh, is there a storm outside? I guess so. <laughs> but anyway, to introduce the, the network, the Philippine APEC Study Center <coughs> Network, and an overview of the symposium, we have Dr. Erlinda Medalia. Dr. Medalia is a senior research fellow at PIDS and project director of the Philippine Apex Study Center Network. She has been the project director, project leader of various research projects since joining the institute in 1981. Her areas of expertise are trade, competition policy, and industrial policy. She has written a number of papers and books, chapters, book chapters on trade and investment, competition policy, and regional economic integration, among others. He has a PhD in economics from the UP School of Economics and was a postdoctoral fellow at Yale University. Dr. Medalia, please. It's really, a, uh, this is one event that you know, I always uh, anticipate uh, the, the, host, the holding of uh, the annual symposium by General Assembly of the PFPN. Uh, the PFPN was uh, created by a presidential decree way back in 1996. And it is really in response to the to, um, uh, APEC uh, initiative by, by, uh, on education. And it's supposed to look at the uh, APEC related issues that were there and would continue to arise. And so at the beginning, there were 10 member institutions, and then there were two others later on. Let me introduce to you the members of the PAFDN. So, first, we have the Asian Institute of Management, AIM, and represented here by Mr. Nicholas Price. He's and then uh, uh, from Ateneo de la Salle. Uh, Ateneo de la Salle, oh my God! <laughs> 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 and then, <laughs> you know, <laughs> University, represented by Dr. Lanzona over there. Uh, the third, and um, this alphabetical order, uh, Central Luzon State University, and uh, they sent us their regrets, um, because they have, they've been busy, they also have also their own um, Affairs right now, and but De La Salle University, um, represented by Dr. Teresa Tumiao, he's been one of our most, you know, uh, very supportive uh, member representatives, along with uh, Butch over there. I should have, you don't have favorites, no? <laughs> and then uh, there's uh, DLSU Lichenko Center, which is with us as well. Uh, I think. Um, uh, uh, the, 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 in the beginning, he's, he was really the, the sorry, my, my senior moment is uh, acting up. Um, is it Nanito? Yeah. Uh, Doctor Villacorta. Villacorta. Uh, he he was one of the first people in in the and he, he really supported the the organization. Uh, but now represented by uh, Miss Samantha by Honan. Uh, and then FSI, um, Foreign Service Institute, represented by Jovito Katiba. There, okay. And uh, Ms. Virgie Salazar. Okay. Uh, MSU, um, Mindanao State University, oops, MIO, represented by Mr. Raymer Mar Esta. I'm so glad that you're here. But Siliman University, uh, my, my real favorite. All of them are. 